Oh, oh, hello. Hello, everyone. It's, it's a night of evening star time. Oh, lovely. Uh, <laughs> it's just a lovely, happy time, isn't it? Shady's we, dead. We I, don't know, I don't know why that got him. Because it just felt like we were introing, oh. I don't know, Blue's Clues. Yeah, I was, was just like going to say Blue's Blue Clues. Hello, Blue's everyone. Like, are you listen, ready to roll dice? Great. Listen, he somehow buddy, got I'm... more British. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he really did. Really did. Well, yeah, you <laughs> ramp it up for like I did. I was gonna say like I did like a whole module in my my sort of acting sort of learning period, all about like doing kids TV and theater and education and stuff. Oh. So it was a proper like, hello everyone, would you like to go on an adventure today and things like that. And so wow. there's a lot of that. That's so what we need to do next that. is D and D for kids. No, I would watch no. a D and D kids show no. hosted on, by come Mark. On, Mark. Let's do it. I, <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm like already... I studied it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> no. I'm already learning. Uh, in case anyone doesn't know, I had skin cancer removed from my face. That's why this is here. Cancer free. Uh, yeah, go go to the dermatologist and wear sunscreen. But I'm quickly realizing that. Uh, being with this group means I smile a lot. Oh and no! Very oh painful. no! So oh, I'm just no. kind of going like this, trying not to move my lip. No more smiling. No, yeah. more, smiling. no more laughing. No more, no more fun. Smiling. No I was, laughing. I was gonna do a bit about like a beholder puppet and the kids show, but we'll we'll cut that for your face. I, It'll yeah, just you be know. a really good exercise in acting. Like yeah. I don't yeah. think you guys are funny. Mark, if you could just like kill animals this session, that'll mm -hmm. that'll that'll do it. Do that'll it a do lot it. better. Nice. That'd be All better right. for health reasons uh, cool. Thanks, but then buddy. she'll okay. frown and that's all it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile Aww. you know that's not true oh <laughs> <laughs> Nate, <Nate's familiar. laughs> yeah look at that exactly. is it really not true i don't know no <laughs> <laughs> it's just you lied easier with to keep such that conviction. state and then um in okay, a classic fashion, acting. yeah. In classic fashion, we've probably spent about ten minutes talking. We're off the rails already. <laughs> yeah, we're off the rails already. Uh, but hey, welcome to Nights of Evening Star. I'm Dungeon Master Mark Short Humes. I'm joined by my lovely friends. We've got Anna Prosser. We've got Nate Sharp. We've got Mika Burton, and we've got Shady Penguin, aka Jonathan Indovino. Hello, welcome. Uh, oh, keep shady. it shady. shady. Keep it shady. Look at that guy wearing. Wow, that which look. one of us is shady now? I can't tell. This is crazy. Yeah, what what's going on? Oh no. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's going on? We what's going on? I'll tell you Nate, what's going on. We're gonna play some Dungeons and Dragons in the setting of Cormir, which is a part of the Forgotten Realms, where our players uh, in, this is our final season, season five. Our players have taken ownership of a small village that they have turned into a blossoming town, and they are now embroiled, embroiled in the uh, mists and fog of war as civil war has descended on Cormir and now our players are caught in the middle of it. We had a bit of a, a year long time skip between season four and season five, which has allowed us to do some cool things. The players have got some cool magic items um, and the town has developed. And this episode, uh, we are gonna be sort of carrying on kind of some light hearted stuff in the town that we didn't get a chance to finish up last time before, well, things will begin to change um, and as well like because the way that we are recording things and things like that uh you may also the maybe the next episode i'm not exactly sure where it's going to fit in but we're going to be doing some flashback episodes which might be like one-on-one -on -one, or like me and two of the players doing some flashbacks about how they got these cool items and some things that happened to them in that year-long break uh, so keep an eye out for those as well. But uh, with this session, you are all in Evening Star. You had had a lovely evening of stoling in the new stoling alley that had been built in the town, as well as kind of catching up with each other and enjoying just some some light-hearted hijinks. Uh, and that is pretty much where we're going to be jumping back in with a couple more things to pick up on. Uh, unless there is anything else I need to mention that I have forgotten with my incredible professionalism. Hey, I'm smooth. I'm good. I'm doing it. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, recap? Oh. Uh, no, I was just trying to think, like, is there anything I've forgotten to do? Oh! oh. Is there anything I've forgotten to do? Like, you already nope. knew the I know, thing we were Yeah, like, same. We were like, what, what, what was, was it? it? Oh, no, I meant, like, is there? I was like, is there something? No, no, no. Uh, no. I was just no, I don't think so. Cool. All right. Well, then let's play some Dungeons & Dragons, shall we? Uh, and uh, we're going to pick it up with uh, probably a few days after the events of the Stoling Alley trip. Um, a new uh, door, a new day dawns in Evening Star. It is uh, late spring, I think. I 
decided. Uh, I can't remember. Time shifts <laughs> around. Um, I got a lot of D and D campaigns up in here, and like sometimes stuff like that gets lost. Um, but I think it's about late spring. It can and, be whatever uh, season you want, anytime you want. It's, it's also fresh. magic, so the seasons can just change when flip around. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, you have a you know things are quiet. You know that there will be things in the future but for now you have not been called up to assist in anything you do currently have a prisoner being held in your keep um that you recovered from uh the sort of cultists lair that are working for this uh, green dragon called shadowbriar um you captured a former war wizard in fact uh who had aligned themselves with the enemy um a tiefling called clavicus you have them locked up in your keep uh there is also uh maybe some other stuff in the town that you might want to do and i have a couple of things that might come up uh, I believe, unless anybody has anything they would like to do to begin with, I have a little something to kick things off, but... Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, we had Melodonus come to help us interrogate said beastie, correct? Ah, right, yes, that was, I remember now, yes, you brought Melodonus, uh, Melodonus along to help you sort of question this fellow. And yeah. that was where the night of stoling occurred because Melodonus wanted to go stoling. Right. Um, yeah. And he got mm -hmm. shoisty. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, he did win. He did win the stoling, but That's yes, true. he mm -hmm. did. Um, but yeah, so if you if you would like Melodonus to help you interrogate, you, you absolutely can. Um, is that where you would like to begin or would you like to start anywhere else? Has anybody else got anything uh, that they would like to do? I kind of want to hear this. I want to hear this happen. Hear what happened? The interrogation, Melodonis and yeah, yeah. Well, before I... we before we get to the interrogation, uh, on the morning in the morning, Azara, when you wake up, um, and I'm, you know, I think that we've you know had a few late nights. Um, you've also been doing a lot of research into the various things that are going to lead to the flashbacks, things like breaking the pact and and uh, you know looking into your own matters and researching Shadowbriar and all this other stuff. Um, you've been working kind of late nights, and when you awake. Um, by the sort of on your towers sort of like main foyer area where you sort of like go down um, there is a small there is a letter waiting for you um, handwritten in a very sort of like pretty envelope with a seal uh, a bouquet of flowers and a basket of baked goods from Sweetwater Bakery here in Evening Star it's been left for you um, uh, by your little uh, by your little table by the door um I think this is like after Azara's like gotten ready and everything, right? Like yeah, for the day, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, then on on her way to, uh, I'm assuming like the main keep, because there's probably some some things to discuss. The prisoner to discuss to greet Melodonus and make sure that his hangover is fine. She'll mm. pick up the basket uh, or just pick something from the basket and uh, read the note on her way to the keep. Sure. Uh, the basket is like kind of got like you know little. Just like, you know, breakfast items, like little croissants and little baked treats and fruit pies and things Definitely like that. Definitely a croissant. She'll take uh, a croissant. Sure. A croissant. A croissant. Uh, I'm going to post it to you uh, oh. on Discord. Uh, oh, the formatting sucks. I'm sorry for that. Um, but there you go. There's the letter you receive. You can have a read of that as you make your way over. Um, whilst you're reading that... Uh, during the day, <laughs> uh, rubbing at your cheeks like anime. Yeah. I'm, gonna just let, I'm gonna let her. I'm gonna let her sit on that for a minute. Uh, uh, Agnes. Uh, yes. You are approached at some point, probably early in the morning. Like not early in the morning, because she would know that you don't tend to do very well in the mornings. But probably not long after you've been up, um, you are sought out uh, in the keep. Um, by Blade Captain uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Dawn Whisper, your, your Blade Captain, um, who comes knocking. Uh, you kind of have like the knock at the door. She's in full armor, full dress uniform armor, um, probably has been out on patrols doing things around the town. Um, but you do probably hear a voice just like, oh, my lady, Crown Silver, are you, are you, would it be all right to speak with you for a moment? Are you are you available? Um, mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. They put on a bathrobe <laughs> and sure. kind of open the door and... Uh, uh, Azara's not not here. Oh, <laughs> she kind of like blushes a little and she's like, no, I, I know. I actually, I needed to come and speak with you. Um, I'm so sorry. I know you you don't tend to be an early riser like myself, but um, I wanted it's to speak It's not early. I was up. Totally. Absolutely. Of course you were. Of course you were, my lady. I wanted to speak with you before um, Azara gets here, actually. I I would like your advice on something. Um, now come in. Sit down. 
Thank you. This is a personal matter. I don't want to intrude uh, if this is too much, but it, it is a more personal matter rather than an official matter. Certainly. We're, I, I mean, we're, we're friends, aren't we? I mean, we've been... I, well, I, it's difficult to say, my lady. You are a noble and I am a knight, but I would like to consider us friends, yes. But you know me, I, I've raised up on a lot of these traditions. It's still strange to call you Agnes rather than Lady Crown Silver, but yes, I would like us to be friends, very much so. Um, if if that's okay with, with you. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not trying to, like, for, you know, I'm not the boss yes. of you. I can't, like, force you to be my friend, but, like, if it... You, you and want. you are not. Uh, yeah. uh, it's certainly in private. Yes, I, that, that's very much the case. But cool. do excuse me, I will still probably call you Lady Crown Silver amongst the troops. And, you know, I have to keep morale and, and discipline and things like that. Makes um, sense. Anyway, uh, yes, I'm rambling because... Um, and she probably comes in and, like, shuts the door and, like, finds something to sit on. Um, and she's definitely, like, nervous. Like, you, you can see that there's big nerves and sort of, you know, uncertainty with her. Um, and she maybe, like, finds, like, a pile of your clothes and moves them off a chair and sits in it or something like that. <laughs> oh, um, let me just, um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I, you know, like, the soldier is just, like, this room is a mess, but, like, I have to try and, like, organize mm -hmm. it kind of thing. Um, but she sits down and she looks at you. She's like, I, perhaps this is a bit much, but um, I need to ask you advice or maybe just check if what I'm doing is okay. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know how to broach the topic. Y you know that um, Magister Azar and I have been seeing each other for some time now, um, mm -hmm. and we, we care for each other deeply. Mm -hmm. And um, although we haven't had too much time together because of uh, the war brewing and the development of the town, I, I feel that we have grown very close and we care for each other immensely. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I've arranged for us to have a dinner um tomorrow night mm -hmm. at the, the i think you can probably guess what i'm about to <laughs> ask um yes is is what you're thinking is is and she will pull out like from within sort of like a pouch on her belt she pulls out a small jewelry box um <laughs> but is this i don't know if this is the right thing to do we it's only been a year and but but the war coming and, and we just don't, what if something happens to us? I, I just felt like I had, I feel like I have to, but also I'm not sure if I should. <clears throat> um, what are your doubts? That it perhaps is too soon. That. What is too soon? Why? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I, I'm, this is new to me. I've not had, a, I've had relationships before, but this is the, probably the most serious one I've ever been in. And after the whole affair in that spa with those hags and everything else, I no longer doubt myself worthy of Azara's affections, but you know, what if something happens to me? What if, what if I propose this and and we get married or something or and she let, if she does say yes let's not even entertain the idea that she says no which is a terrifying heart crushing thought <laughs> but even if she said yes i might i in a battle i might die and then she'd be alone again or, or she might die on an adventure with you and i just i don't know uh, I, I but does not asking her change any of that I suppose not. No, no. I suppose it doesn't. You don't. And, do you... and on the flip side, does asking her change anything about where you are now? No, I, I think that it does actually. No, it does change something. I, I want to take this next step. I, I want to show that commitment to her, but also. I don't know. I, I grew up on stories of knights and princesses and fairy tales here in Cormier, and the, the idea of marrying someone like Azara is is a dream, and I'd be foolish not to not to admit that. So, um, it would it would change things for the better, for me personally. I just don't know if it's what she wants. Um, it's hard to. It's not something I've had the courage to ask her about just yet. Maybe well, the only way for to know is to ask her. And I've never known you to shy away from mm. something terrifying. No, that's true. Although this is very different to charging hydras and wyverns and the things like that. But um, thank you. I think I just needed someone to talk to about this. It's 
being surrounded by a bunch of soldiers we don't tend to talk about romance and things like that very often so i kind of like put my hand on her shoulder and i'm like thanks for coming to me of course like i said we're friends i i i go for like awkwardly go for a hug yeah she's like it's all armor and cold <laughs> like you're kind of like oh it's really cold yeah, yeah. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. um but she will sort of like you know kind of return and say thank you i guess i i, I thank you for this um I'll, I'll i'll think about it some more maybe i'll sort of judge how the dinner goes but yes i i i am intending to do this dinner tonight tomorrow tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow. okay cool I, so I have patrols and I know that we have this prisoner and there are other things to do, but um, tomorrow night. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm just zzz, me mm, mm, till Thank tomorrow. You. Yep. Zzz. Thank you. And then she will yeah, put the, put the, put the thing back in a pouch and then she will head out. Um, all right. Is there, how's the ring? It's a good ring. I'm not going to say just yet. I, I like, y y well, I've I, seen it. You've seen it, but I don't want to say it out loud just yet. I will, I will send you the description on this gourd. Because uh, I need to know whether Agnes approved of the ring or not. Okay, 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 okay. Because yeah, Agnes yeah, yeah, yeah. knows Azara's preferences. Yes, 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 yes. Let me, let me. And I... if it was a bad ring, then Agnes would have warned <laughs> Alyssa. Yeah. That's a good best friend right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. I have sent you the description. I want to say it out loud, Jax. I want it to be a, I want, I want it to be a surprise for me, Kit, so. Okay. I think, uh, I think that Agnes approved of it, so no warning needed nice good 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 all right uh the rest of you are probably probably not summoned but called to like let you know people let you know that azara and metal Donus are coming over to interrogate this uh this war mage this war wizard um those of you who want to be there can absolutely be there uh does clive tarkle or agnes want to get involved i, I do but agnes listen. has to go grab some water before she comes she, she yeah, goes so she'll fine. be right back uh, so Taco's just gonna sort of ominously stand in a corner and listen in. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm in the room. I'm in the room. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think Azara would have also had Willow Song show up, but would have warned Tarkal that Which she's thought? gonna be there. That's a that's a great question, Mika, because now I get to ask like, how, what does Shady think about that? What does Shady think about that? <laughs> um, Tarkal doesn't seem to mind that Willow Song is there. Yeah, and Willow Song does not mind. Uh, that Taco is there. She actually seems, when Azara speaks to her, she seems happy that Taco's going to be there. Okay, something <laughs> happened in these one shots. <laughs> what are you talking about? What one shot? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Um, what but yeah, uh, would Clive like to be present for the interrogation of Clavicus? Yeah. Yeah? All right, nice. Does Clavicus uh, have like a really pronounced collarbone? <laughs> uh i mean he's a tiefling if you would like clavicus to have a very pronounced clavicle uh then absolutely there yeah there you go uh very pronounced it's like um, protruding out it's like up to here yeah it's you know all spiny i was imagining more like devilish. like kind of point like points out here almost could do like an know. anime sort of like gyver thing where it's like sticking out like bone <laughs> instead of tiefling it. horns on his head it's on his clavicle that's yeah. where he oh. gets his name yeah weird <laughs> super weird um yeah well you guys all make your way he's been kept in the sort of uh there is a very small kind of um jail i can't think there's a, probably a better word for it in like military sense but yeah basically there is a jail which is kept beneath the barracks um in the keep um it's very small there's probably only about maybe two or three cells a small guard chamber iron bars very just to keep the work like you know people that need to be kept here temporarily and then they're probably sent on to a bigger city you know once they've been properly sort of like you know taken into custody by the Cormerian sort of laws basically or Cormerian uh, sort of officers and law enforcers you know you guys would just keep them here under local authority basically to start with um he's been fed he's been sort of like you know treated as a normal prisoner um he does have his hands bound um and i think you took away his like spell components and stuff like that um so but he does have his hands like bound in basically like leather kind of like um like a leather mittens that are bound together so he can't do somatic components basically mm. like keeps his hands free um uh but yeah he's basically just sat on like a very simple straw bed um and uh yeah when you guys all make your way in the guards the, the all the soldiers do that thing where they like look at each other they nod and then they leave you guys to it they're just like right we're gonna 
leave you all to it. Uh, Meridonis is with you, like, ah, yes. Is this the one that you meant? Uh, licks his eyeball. Uh, Azara has definitely come dressed and and primped for interrogation intimidation. I think she would have like fluffed up her wings a little bit more so she looks a little more intimidating. I know that's ironic, fluffing up angel wings to look intimidating. Um, but like definitely- Powerful. Does, yeah, powerful. Doesn't have any excess jewelry on, kind of has a very simple dark robe on um, mm -hmm. and walks up to the front of the cage and is like, yes, this is the traitor, the one who has gone against the war wizards and joined the evil forces. Interesting. Uh, Climacus will sort of look up. You can see uh, Tiefling, so like like purple skin Tiefling, does have the horns, pronounced clavicle. Um, very sort of worn wizard robes, but they're now a bit dirty and in shambles. Um, very thin pointed, like devil sort of goatee kind of looking beard. Um, very sort of thin gaunt looking face and eyes. And just wearily looks up in your direction. Um, not like sneering, but just looks tired and miserable. Um, uh, and just sort of, you know, doesn't say anything, but he's obviously now like, okay, they've come to finally talk to me. I, I should listen. Um, but doesn't say anything, like just kind of stays quiet for now. I um, said that Agnes would be there, but I just remembered the last time Azara interrogated someone. Yeah, that was fun. And I think when Agnes sees Azara's like puffed up, like ready to intimidate look. Black robes. Like, <laughs> Inquisitor yeah. Azara is here. Yeah. Agnes is like, I'll leave you to it, but um, just keep the law in mind. And then she'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, as you go to leave like willow song will probably catch you she's probably lingering near the door sort of keeping a bit of distance mm -hmm. um willow song might grab you agnes and just say like would you like me to ensure that healing styles and laws are adhered to i can speak with magister azara keep an eye on her i certainly as the upholder of laws and evening star mm -hmm. i would need to say yes please do she will look at you and you hear in your mind, not out loud, what do you want to do? Uh, can I respond in my mind? You can. Uh, in my mind, I'll say like, oh my gosh, please. Yes. St keep her under control. She's so scary when she does this. <laughs> I can't force her to, but I will try and remind her. Also, okay. uh, there may be something that there is, uh, I've regained an ability that may help us here. Um, and uh, Willow Song will come up to you, Azar, as you're sort of waiting and sort of speak with you. She'll whisper into whisper to your ear, mm. Magister, would you like to have telepathic communication with your companions whilst this interrogation is, under, is being done? I'll just nod. Okay. Um, Willow Song steps back. Her eyes become draconic eyes, mm -hmm. um, and you see her fingers just gently flicks and sort of like, you know, casting spells, um, and she whispers a word in draconic, and Clive, Agnes, Azara, Tarkal, Willow Song are now all, you can now telepathically communicate with each other. Um, oh, that's dope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she uses her telepathic, uh, telepathic bonds spell. Walkie talkies. <laughs> right? Yeah. D&D yeah. uh, &D walkie talkies. <laughs> she will say, Clive, I wish to warn you that we are now magically communicating <laughs> in our minds and you can respond by thinking to us. <laughs> I hear that in my mind. You do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Clive kind of looks around, and then his mind's like, "Who said that?" <laughs> oh. oh, that's me. Echo. Yes, it, and it Echo. was I, Willow Song. Hello. Yes. We can all hear you. How are you doing that? How am I doing that? <laughs> it it is a magical spell, my dear. Oh, magic! I know magic a little bit. Yes. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> this will last about an hour for everyone's. Oh, it's a long time to be talking with Echo. <laughs> I think while this is happening, Azara is like trying really hard to remain serious, but you'll see like this tiny twitch in the corner of her mouth as she's trying not to cackle at Clive's like rambling in the back oh. of her mind. <laughs> I like to imagine that Clive is like literally doing this mm -hmm. as, he's, like, uh -huh. his head as well. Yeah. Um, but then she tries to focus back on the prisoner. Uh, so tell me, how many of you have defected from our sacred order? 
<laughs> Your sacred order, I think you mean. Uh, what was it, Ma Azara, isn't it? I don't think I really count anymore, do I? Um, no, you don't. But the only thing keeping you from a gruesome, painful, and elongated death is by speaking. So I suggest you start speaking. We, they don't want you to do the cool stuff anymore. <laughs> oh. Is it still on? <laughs> yes, yes, it's still on, Clive. We can, yes. Oh, hello. Uh, well. Clavicus will, uh, he kind of looks at you, not hard, but like he's looking at you, kind of like sizing you up. Do you want to make, um, make an intimidate for me? Or is this like, how much is Azara bluffing here? Like, I'm going to leave that, like, you tell me if she's bluffing or if she's um, being genuinely like, no, I'm threatening you with truth. Or is it, because if it's more of a bluff, it's more deception. Like you're trying to act imposing. Right. If it's a genuine, like, no, I'll, I'll kill you. Like, no, like, it's, you I think. I as much as Azara takes her position seriously, seeing a war wizard working for the bad mm -hmm. guys, she's like, I'll fucking kill you. Okay, like, yeah. This is this right. is what I live my life for. This is intimidate then. Yeah. Straight up intimidation. Straight up intimidation. 22. 22. He kind of looks at you for a bit uh, and you, you think he believes you. He's like, now just to clarify, is that a gruesome, painful death at your hands or the ones that I would be betraying by telling you? And there is a faint smile, like, because I'm pretty sure that that's my fate, whether I'm here or with them now. Well, the difference between us and them is my gruesome, painful death is if you don't talk and maybe you'll have protection or at least you'll be put to good use and get to see another day if you do talk. Well, that is good to know that that option does exist at least. Um, as far as I'm aware, there are no other war wizards who, I gotta get his voice because I'm making him sound way too cool. He's more <laughs> sort of like, he's more sort of like, yes, uh, I suppose that um, there are no other war wizards as far as i'm concerned as far as i know at least i was the only one um and there's i mean actually no i'll yeah like if you always you know if you want to make insight checks into stuff him you can at any point any of you can uh, anybody who is present um you're all kind of being i'm assuming that like you know willow song is basically relaying anything he says to the group and then yeah. you know anything like she's keeping minutes she's being like the the you know law like the lawyer in court who's like typing up all the notes and she's just like Zara's <laughs> just said this blah 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 like sending out those messages to like Agnes and Tarkle and stuff for those who aren't present um but yeah he yeah he kind of looks at you and he says that um he's like as far as I'm aware there are no other <laughs> war wizards who have uh, joined with the dragon and what made you join I mean, if you want to hear my sob story, Magister, you're welcome to it, but it's really uh, not that exciting. I am not Cormirian. I got into the War Wizards through uh, connections and contacts and have been overlooked, cast aside, and generally treated like dirt by your fellows and the nobles of this oh-so-glorious nation for far too long, and I was offered something else. It does turn out that dragons do not make much better masters than war wizards. And he kind of like makes a face as he looks. Azara's like frown deepens because that's such a like piss paltry reason for defecting to her. Like, oh, boo hoo. Yeah. And I think like at that point, even though knowing that Agnes is not fond of her more brutal tactics, like lightning crackles on one of her hands because she's just so disgusted by this like mealy little tiefling. And she's like, so you mean to tell me that you went against your years of training, your brethren that I'm sure you had despite your treatment with the war wizards because you felt like you didn't get special treatment Boo who is that really the reasoning? I think that people have done worse things for far less reasons. Uh, but yes, that is ultimately why I made the initial decision to betray Cormir, if you want to think of it that way. Um, well, then just... this is how this is going to happen. Hmm. 
you've pissed me off even more. And if you want to have even a chance of breathing another breath past this day, you are going to tell us everything that you know about this dragon's plan. You are going to detail everything that you've heard, everything that you've worked on, everyone that you've worked with. And there better not be one ounce of deception in anything you tell us because I will not hesitate to slice you from head to toe. If you um, absolutely should make an intimidate check. Okay. <laughs> Tell them I could punch them in the face. <laughs> That's only a 13. Clive, crack, crack your knuckles, Clive. <laughs> yeah, if Clive is like stood there, like cracking his knuckles and stuff like that, like it definitely does, adds a little bit to it. Does he, does he not seem intimidated? He actually doesn't. Um, there is like a, there is like, he, he definitely has this kind of weaselly nature. Um, but seeing the 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 threat of violence, like seeing like Azara, and I think that like for the audience's benefit, right? Like Azara doesn't know this, but like it was all like, well, you know, we might let you go if you talk to us and stuff like that. And then immediately it's like, here's lightning, here's threats of violence, and you kind of get the impression he's kind of used to that. Like you get the mm. impression that like he that is like, oh, okay, she's just like everyone else then. Mm. Um, and he basically goes, I see. Well, I am more than willing to tell you everything I know, uh, to share what information I have on the conditions of my release, a safe escort to the borders of Cormir, and enough gold to start a new life on the Sword Coast. Otherwise, I think that I have nothing else to bargain with, so I won't give it up for free, even under threat of death and being sliced alive. Uh, my situation anywhere else would be no different. Clive just... will walk up and like kind of squat down, like look at him. I'm I'm assuming he's like on the floor. Yeah, well, there's like a very sh crappy wooden bed with like a okay. straw like mattress, and he's kind of sat on the end of it basically. Um, Clive will like reach into uh, his satchel, mm -hmm. and he takes out a little uh, uh, dead mouse and just places it on the inside of the cell and then just kind of gives him a wink and then like steps back <laughs> is that are, are you looking for like an outcome or are you just like no i'm just i'm screwing with is this, this guy. good like, cop bad cop but for cats yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, is this like are, is this a, are you trying to like uh like what do you, what does clive want out of this because mark doesn't quite know like i mark the dm needs to ask nate the player Honestly, what, what, Nate what the do you player want? isn't entirely sure. Just <laughs> okay, that's fine. Like, that's fine. Like, Clive's just like, I'm doing this. <laughs> dead mouse is good, so put good Give mouse in in cell. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think he looks, and this tiefling looks very confused, and he isn't sure if this is another threat, or you're just strange, or if this is meant to be a gift, and he just kind of looks at it precuriously, like, um... But he doesn't say anything. He's just, he's also trying to keep one eye on Azara, who he, you know, notices has still got this lightning crackling and stuff like that. Clive just like ambiguously nods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, just yes. <laughs> um, I would say that at his kind of defeatist nature of like he just wants to live, mm -hmm. um, the lightning will calm down a little bit. And Azara will say, I'm not saying. I will give you all of that this easily. You're not going to be able to be a traitor to your country and your kind and just leave. However, I am willing to discuss your terms of release with the Crown Silvers and my associates, and we'll see what we can do. That is very generous. And uh, of course, I do not expect you to just agree. I'm willing to negotiate as well. I understand my own circumstance. Uh, I do feel that I, uh, I have a better chance of trusting you than the dragon. Um, he does glimpse, like he glances in Willow Song's direction when he says things like dragon. He's like, mm, not sure about that one. Um, but yeah, he'll say, he'll be like, I'm willing to negotiate. Uh, Seeing that you as foolish as I consider you to be, you aren't unreasonable. And the lightning will go away and she'll kind of unpuff a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like you could be a better resource to us alive than dead. I and so. if at all you remember what it means to be a war wizard and the oaths that we took, then maybe your situation here can change. And she'll kind of look at uh, Willow Song to like, and in her mind say, look, I, I feel like this was just an idiot led astray. He could be more used to us. He could possibly even aid us with his, with his powers. I think maybe we, he could be of use. So see what you can do to find out as much as you can. She'll say, of course, yes, I will. Uh, we will negotiate, we will discuss. Um, and see what we can do. Uh, you will at this point. Merodonus. Merodonus has just been stood there quietly. Yeah. All of this. Yeah. Uh, and then he will just say out loud, "Well, this one's mind is quite a fortress. I was not able to plumb the depths of it, uh, but uh, there are definitely things that he knows that will be of use. Unfortunately, I was not able to access the juicy details, uh, but he certainly is a useful one to be keeping alive. He's certainly not lying about uh, his intentions. He's mm. desperate to leave. Uh, likely is as afraid of this shadow briar as he is of you, Magister. <laughs> As I will kind of primit that, like, oh, he's afraid of me. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Clavicus will be like, I thought I felt, I thought I felt someone trying to noodle around in there. That was you, was it, Dragonborn? Meridonis will just look at him and just be like, mm, I must congratulate you on your impressive mental fortitude, my good man. I do hope that you don't anger the Magister enough for her to flay you alive. Mm. And then he'll just sort of be like, nah, well, and then he'll sort of make his way off. <laughs> uh, Zara, as he's walking <clears throat> off, will say, there's tea and uh, pastries for you in the main hall if you would like it. I know you have quite a sweet tooth. Lovely. And he'll just make his way up. Um, Willow Song will say to the rest of you out loud, not in your heads, just like, I can take it from here. We'll make sure that um, well, let's, we will have a chat about these terms of his uh, information. Just pass on any final offers to us and we'll see what we can do. Of course. Um, and uh, and uh, I think that, yeah, she'll just say like, well, I will come and report on my findings later or whenever you wish to come and find me. Um, Tarkal, there may be at some point, uh, there may be, we should consider the blade and how it may be useful in some of these situations, not as a tool of harm, but its unique powers may be, there may be something that we can do there, um, perhaps. Um, yes, I was thinking if he does have any ties to Shadowbriar, they need to be severed. Indeed, uh, just in case that there are some mystical connections that we're unaware of, but yes, uh, thank you. And she'll just sort of like nod and uh, basically make her way down and be like, now, my little tiefling friend, let's have a talk. Um, and she'll dismiss the telepathic bond, that spell ends, um, and uh, yeah, she'll leave you guys to it. Um. Right. Yeah, that's I fine. Will. I have so okay. many questions. I have so many questions. Oh, you can ask those questions. That's the wonder of this game. You can ask those questions. I don't know if I can. I have so many questions about this blade and 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 Tarko. Oh. I have so many questions. Oh. Oh. Let's start talking about it, right? Uh, about it. Is uh, is everyone leaving the jail at this point? Yeah, I think yeah. so, right? Yeah. Like, well, um, you know, does Clive want to do something? Clive will be the last one out and okay. kind of watches to make sure everyone's left. He looks back in the cell and, like, looks out again. And, like, while he's looking out, reaches into his satchel, takes out another mouse and just kind of, like, slides it. And then on his way out, just... <laughs> and then slowly backs out. <laughs> This time, I think at this point, Clavicus is like, he like nods at you and he just gives you a <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> like having finally realized what you're trying to do. Um, he doesn't take the dead mice, but he does give you the thumbs up and doesn't make any big moves. Willow Song was still there the whole time, but she pretends not to see. She's just like, 
I'm just going to pretend that this isn't happening. <laughs> uh, seeing Willow's song there, like, on the way out, just, like, yeah. very quietly says to her, he won't be any trouble anymore. <laughs> just walks out. She just, like, she, like, sm there's a genuine smile. Like, she genuinely smiles and is like, good to know. And then just, you know, watch you, watches you pass. Just Clive uh, things. Just Clive things, Clive things. Dude. Just oh. Clive things. Hashtag t-shirt. Hashtag I want a t-shirt, just Clive things and a dead mouse. Just Clive yeah. things. Just Clive two, things. two dead mice. Two yeah. dead mice. <laughs> It's it's so fun having a character that you play and even you don't understand their logic. Yeah. Just You're like, just like I don't know. This is a thing I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that's the thing he's doing. I I'm I don't know what he's doing. It's like your body is, is possessed by the spirit of Clive and does mm -hmm. things for you. I know that. That's that's a vibe. I get that. Oh, that one um, brain cell working real hard on that hamster wheel, just <laughs> just going. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel that like we like if I like Clive's intelligence should maybe come down a few points. But that's fine. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I already have uh, a bonus of zero, so yeah. if you People want to be negative, intelligent no, in many no, different can, ways, exactly yeah, right. That's like, true. So we we play him as like a, a very different way of thinking. That's that's mm -hmm. Clive. It's not that there's it's no intelligence intention. in this context. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's intelligence to being a giant cat man. Um, He's so good yeah. at that. Uh, upstairs, you guys can uh, reconnoitre. You can sort of meet back up and discuss about what just happened or, or anything else you would like to do. Um, any other points that were mentioned? Um, yeah. Agnes is also kind of avoiding Azara. Like, okay. not notably, like, running away or whatever, but, like, oh, so everyone. Uh, yeah. How, how, what do we think, everyone? I think Azara's also like noticing this, but not making it a big deal out of this because in her years of knowing Agnes, like she's done some weird things and had some weird moods. So she's just kind of like standing on the other side of the hall, like sure. trying to make eye contact with her. And like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like, all right, we'll, we'll figure this out later. Um, I do think Azara's gonna kind of quietly retire back to her chambers um, to think over like, what it means to betray your bonds and like how somebody can so easily and like if there were any people that she knew that were like abusive in the war wizards like just having such a personal connection to this war is kind of mm -hmm. messed with her so i think she's just kind of kind of yeah and like i mean i think that in those quiet moments of reflection you know those niggling doubts of i mean you've met war wizards who are not very good people and you know hear like you know not even just like the the treatment of others but just you know there's that very strong uh, um sense of like we are the best we are you know all about cormir we don't care about anybody else and our job is to be awesome wizards and that's what our, that's what we do and some people are, are great with that and they use that to the betterment of everybody else and then there are the people that aren't good with it um and there's probably maybe not people that have like directly harmed Azara, but you've you've known friends who have been hurt by other war wizards in their political kind of scheming. But they are the minority. Like for the most part, mm -hmm. the war wizards are generally good um, and generally are trying to help the nation. Um, but it's yeah, they're not they're not always the best. Um, same with any anyone. Like same with the knights. Same with any kind of like the nobles. You know, it's all people, right? Um, but uh, it does yeah. It's, Good things to think about and, and some definitely some deep moments for azara to kind of consider maybe as well like you know this this kind of organization and this uh this idea of these things going on um whilst azara is retired uh the rest of you in the keep um <laughs> dusk uh will come and find the crown silvers and clive um it's, ah, uh, my lady crown silver my, my lord and lady crown silver and um warden uh den of warden den of the war i'm not sure how it works uh, for you clive um clive um there is something that um demands your attention in the audience chamber i'm afraid a sort of civil matter uh nothing magical uh, so i don't need to bother magister azara but um it concerns a civil matter here in evening star and one of um clive's companions so i thought it best to come and fetch you Parkle will kind of look over to Clive and be like, what did your pack do? Whatever it is, it was probably very sensical. <laughs> Agnes will just start striding toward the 
audience chamber. Yeah, you have like this kind of like chamber with like the chairs and like, you know, people can come and speak to you, you know, the classic kind of like, oh, come and tell us the problems and what's mm -hmm. going on. And, you know, it's also where you would like, you know, receive news. Um, and stood there um, is uh, sort of Donk, is uh, the Kenku Blacksmith, Donk Wobble, um, your Kenku Blacksmith here in Evening Star. Um, Baragon, the uh, Leonin who came with Clive uh, along with Ez. Uh, as one of these sort of like scouts and hunters uh, that came with uh, with Clive and a couple of guards actually. Um, no, it doesn't look like you know anybody's been forced here, but there's definitely like something has happened. Um, and Donk Wobble, uh, when he sees you all enter, makes a lot of angry clanging, banging sounds. Uh, you probably hear a couple of like exclamations in all sort of different voices, like "Took you long enough," and like "I've been waiting here forever," um, and like all these different voices kind of popping off. Um, and to dusk will kind of get you into the chamber and settle and be like, uh, Mr. Donk Wobble, our blacksmith here, um, has levied uh, a charge against uh, Baragon of the Wild Main, um, and it does need, um, it needs uh, intervention uh, on behalf of the, the local authorities, which would fall to yourselves, Lord and Lady. And, and I, believe, I believe that uh, Clive should be involved in the process as well. Um, and they will sort of, uh, he sort of like gestures to uh, the sort of floor uh, and yeah Donk begins <laughs> trying to in a series of voices I'm not going to do it in all these different voices basically has accused Baragon of stealing uh, or breaking he's not sure which um, but basically uh, his bellows his his you know mm. sentimental bellows like his favorite pair of bellows from his smithy and he's like he's basically like he's stolen it uh, the, poor, the boy has taken it from me um <laughs> and uh like all these different voices kind of combining like lots of angry noises and like wheezing like he gestures like to make the gesture of bellows to indicate what was taken and things like that um and yeah he's, he's you're saying, saying that, he doesn't know if it was stolen or broken uh donk will say he borrowed my and then mm. he makes the gesture and like to mm -hmm. indicate bellows um and then he says last night but now he claims, and like he's jumping between all these different voices, um, that and basically says that yeah, Baragon is now saying that he brought them back to the smithy, but they weren't there. Uh, and and Donk thinks he's lying. He's like he's lying. He's got them. He borrowed them, and he won't give them back. Um, mm. Is is the what he's implying? Um, so he doesn't know if he's stolen them or if he's broken them, and is now lying to like say, oh, I put them back, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that's that's the that is the event that has been brought to your attention, and you can decide how much you care about it. Baragorn, what say you? I, my good lady, I must. This fellow won't listen to me. I've tried to explain it to him. I did return his bellows late last night after he had retired to bed. I put them in his smithy. If they are not there now, I do not know what has happened to them. I I returned them. If they are gone now, it must have been other some other scoundrel or scallywag. Well, that's enough for me. A wild man has no reason to lie. I think this case is closed. Thank you, Pride Beaver. Thank you. Donk is like clang, 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 clang. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thief. He's mm. broken it. Clive will look to Donk Wobble, kind of squint like, at him. And like Donk looks up at you, like annoyed at you, like how dare you? I've made things for you. He reaches into his bag, <laughs> hands him. Oh no! A dead mouse. <laughs> says, "Got like, your troubles, like, lad." Throws it on the ground. <gasps> Kicks he da it he daunting you. roars at Donk Wobble immediately. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, now, uh, everyone, uh, everyone, yeah. now, five, five. order. Hang on, I gotta find, I gotta find the wisdom save of a Kenku. Uh, <laughs> I believe right. the What's... save's a nineteen. Nineteen. If I roll a, I got a natural friggin' twenty. No joke. Donk he has is no modifier. brave. Mm -hmm. Donk just stands there and like puffs his little, his little crow like feathers like, and he just pumps himself up and he imitates the roar back to you. He's like, and like Whoa. literally copies what you just did. Does well, it work? Like does the daunting yeah. work? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't oh. have the same magical effect. <laughs> oh. um, he, can only really cool. he can just replicate the sound, but yeah. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he stands his ground um, and says, uh, you hear, uh, they belong to me grandpappy. 
<laughs> can I um, roll insight just to see if I have any inkling? Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. I got a nat twenty. Ooh. Nat twenty. Okay. Uh, are you what, what? What's the goal of the insight? Like, who are you inciting? What are you trying to like? What's the what's the intention of the role? I I generally believe that Donk Wobble thinks this is what's happened. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to get insight into what Baragorn is saying, mm -hmm. like whether he did return it or not, and then you know, okay. I really so what this I'm is trying the point. to yeah, go on. I'm I'm also trying to. Like there's there's always the chance, right, that Donk Wobble just like lost it or something, you know. Like Wait, I'm just yeah, trying to possibly. get the the what the gist. How much responsibility and truth is coming from mm -hmm. both of them? All right. I will say. Um, I mean, from everything that you know, yeah, it's it's you. Donk seems pretty convinced that like he it's been taken. You don't, you don't get the impression that he's like hiding anything. Like he's a really mad. Like he's mm -hmm. genuinely really upset and and doesn't seem to be like hiding anything. With a nat twenty. Baragon's telling the truth, but not the whole story. And this is the point where the little title screen will come up. And like in Phoenix Wright, we get the... Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it's uh, the Donk Wobble Turnabout. Um, and uh, you <laughs> the will Donk need... The Donk Wobble Turnabout! <laughs> you'll need to, to cross-examine the stories to, to maybe get the... So that you, like, you know that something's going on. You know that Baragon's not telling you the whole truth. But you're gonna need to like get him to give an account of what happened, and then um, see if there's see if there's a thing. Y'all have played Phoenix, right? Like you, you know. Oh, I, yeah. love, I love Phoenix, right? Do, yeah. Do, do, yeah, exactly. Who pops up and goes objection? Oh, well, <laughs> that's my know. favorite part. Yeah, that's it's. I guess whoever is uh, whoever wants to take it on board. Like, is is Clive gonna defend his accused pride mate as the uh, as the uh, you know Clive Wildmain Ace Attorney, or is <laughs> this uh, you know how's this gonna go down? Uh, Cl Clive is not remotely capable <laughs> of anything like this. Is, Clive, I mean, Clive just genuinely believes intent. him. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's like, just like yeah, he wouldn't lie. Yeah. Agnes will just be like Baragorn. Uh, uh, yes, my lady. Yes. If you returned, well, first of all, why did you borrow a bellows? Oh, well, <laughs> a bit of a something of a personal matter, my lady. Um, but um, well, you see. And I'm actually going to, this is where we would get witness testimony. <laughs> um, so Baragon will say, well, perhaps I should explain uh, the, the evening then. Um, I borrowed the bellows from Donk Wobble at 7 p.m. last night on the seventh, the seventh bell. And I took them to a room in the nearby tavern to use later, around about 10 bells, 10 o'clock in the evening. I used the bellows to make my bath water hotter by stoking the coals. It's, it's frightfully cold by the time it gets to my, by the time I get to it. Um, so I was using the bellows to, to sort of heat it up and make it nice and warm. Um, I finished my bath around 11 bells, enjoyed a few drinks in the tavern, then remembered I needed to return the uh, bellows to Donk. So I took them to the smithy, um, I uh, deposited them and um, left. And that was that is the story. You deposited them. Uh, the, the if the smithy was closed, how did you manage to return the bellows? Hold it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Baragon like kind of like is like oh well the smithy was closed. You're correct. Yes, the door was locked, so I actually had to I had to open up the the window uh, with a little bit of force. But I I wanted to make sure that I left them. I didn't want Donk to think that I'd kept them or lost them or something. So I opened the window and I placed them in. I climbed in. I put the the bellows on on the workbench and then I left. So you broke and entered. The, Only the to return something. I mean, what is what? I I entered his home to return something. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, and Donk, you did not find the bellows on the workbench where Baragon says it was. <laughs> Slides over. Witness testimony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donk will tell you that his. This is his account of things. Uh, Donk, and I'm not going to do all the different voices because it's too much. Kenkus are a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> I, hate <the> fact, <laughs> I hate the fact you made this guy a Kenku, but I love him. I love him, but I hate him. Uh, Donk will tell you that he went to sleep about 11 o'clock after working late in the smithy. Um, he has a small cabin attached to the smithy that he lives in, uh, but it has a separate entrance. He woke up about 6 a.m. in a bad mood and then got ready for the day of work. He came into the smithy um, in the morning at 6 and had to clear up a few things before he realized the bellows were gone. Um, they, they, you know, and he says, yeah, I couldn't find them. 
they weren't you know anywhere in the in the room um and then he says yeah baragon borrowed them at 7 p.m the previous day and was the last person to happen and that's donk's account well sister may i uh, please baragon you've been known to have more than a few drinks when you do have a drink. Oh, yes. well, I do enjoy a party, my lord. Yes, it's true. I and do after, enjoy after a table. That is true. I, yes. I can attest to that. <laughs> yes, Good indeed. job, Clive. Thank you, Clive. Thank, Thank you, Clive. Clive. Thank you. Um, so, you see, I'm nothing but an honest man. <laughs> honest man. You, you've made your way uh, after your bath at 11 Bells to the tavern and had a few drinks. Yes, yes, a few, I suppose. And then, and then you managed your way back to Donk Wobble Smith, Smithy, opened the window, <laughs> climbed inside, placed his bellows down, climbed back out, closed the window. Was the Donk Wobble? Was the window? Was your window open when you woke up? Uh, so uh, when you when you say climbed back out, um, you definitely notice like Baragon sort of like looks the other way, he's like. <laughs> he makes like a face. He's like, Ooh. Um, uh, uh, but he, uh, but when you ask Donk the question, uh, Donk will say, um, "Window, window was, uh, window was closed, but uh, yeah, no, he, yeah, he says no, the window was closed. Yeah, no, okay. sorry, I had to think through events there, but no, he's mm -hmm. like, no, the window was closed. Um, okay, so you you close the window behind you after climbing out, Aragon." I did not say that, sir. I have not lacked. Um, I actually used the door to leave the smithy. I unlocked it from the inside and I left through the door. So then why why would the window be closed if you went into the smithy and left it? When Don Quabba woke up, he said the window was closed. Well, I, that, that is a mystery. I did not know that fact, sir. I, I, I knew my account of things. Um, perhaps somebody else came Listen, in afterwards. Listen, you drunken lion mane. <laughs> is there a chance you walked into the wrong building? Oh, no, no, Did you no. climb into the wrong I, building's window? Because, and I remember it, I saw the forge there, I saw Donk's table, I know the layout of the building. I could I could sketch that building, that room for you right now, sir. Please it's do. true, he has quite Dusk, the talent with that. Dusk, please provide some paper. Very, of Have course, Baragon of course, sketch. my lady. He will bring over a parchment and Baragon with a piece of like charcoal will sketch out the interior of the smithy. Um, and uh, this is where I wish I had actually drawn this so you could have like a little image. Mm. But it's basically like a kind of square room with like a forge at the back. There is a window on the side and a door uh, next to it with a bench, a workbench near the door. Um, and Baragon will say like, yes, yeah, see this? I entered through this window, um, I, which I had to force open. I left the bellows near the table by the forge and then I left through the door. I unlocked it from the inside and then I left. Um, and Donk so will you confirm- left both you left the door open and the window well, open. Well, like you say, my <laughs> lord, I did have a few beverages in me. I was not quite in my full capacity, I suppose, but I did return those bellows. Even in my drunken state, I knew that I should return. Them. Here's I knew that the they were precious to Doc. It is possible that you left the window and door of the smithy open and someone else entered, stole the bellows, closed the window and the door, and oh, then but, left. Well, I suppose. I suppose, but this is Evening Star. Your your people do not just steal things, do they? Well, the we thing. also didn't have lions running around and cracking windows drunkenly and unlocking doors. Well, maybe they should be unlocked so that doesn't happen. I and I I yes, indeed, indeed, blind pride, pride leader, indeed, exactly that. A uh, lack of vigilance, I would say, uh, from I, the people of Evening Star. Hmm. Yes. Well, here's what I will say as interpreter of the law of Evening Star. The bellows was lent willingly, if I understand correctly. Don't go fold his wings, nod. So there was no theft. However, not returning an item that is necessary to the livelihood of the smithy is a fairly large and but egregious <laughs> neglect. My ladyship, Furthermore, I did return them. I did, I promise you I did. Furthermore, neglecting to secure the smithy after breaking and entering it is also an act of egregious neglect. So while I hesitate to call this a criminal action, I he do falls feel- to his knees. 
<laughs> he like, looks up at you, he like falls to his knees. He's like, my good lady, before you punish me, please, please. You must understand, before I came to Evening Star, I didn't know what a lock was. How would I, a poor pride wild man, mm. know to lock a door after I'd left it? We've, mm. we've never encountered them before. Yes, certainly in the Feywild, all is riches. And and ease, Full of right? Trust, yes, love. trust, yes. Just absolutely. open windows everywhere, huh? And and you, yes. you, you must must never have been in want for anything, right? You have plenty of of resources and friends, right? It is much nicer there. It is. Yeah. It is. They, it seems the booze is not quite as good as here, but yes, it's yes. through as well. It just seems to me like an upstanding lion man, such as yourself, who who has means would not hesitate to replace something of such value to our smithy, regardless of whether they were at fault or not. I, my lady, I have already offered to provide the gold to Donk to, to buy him new bellows, but he refuses. He says that these bell these, these particular bellows were something, it was something that was given, it's important to him. I've offered to pay, but he's furious. And you see, Donk basically is like, they belong to me, grandpappy. Um, <laughs> well, Donk, what would you have us do if you don't want the gold? He does like, he does this gesture. Mm. Makes the bellows gesture. Mm. And then he probably points at Baragon. Him. He wants, you want Baragon to look for the bellows? Uh, he makes like a punching motion with his wing and then points at Baragon. And then he points at you and Tarkle and Clive, and then he does the like. You want us to look look for your bellows and punish Baragon. (sighs) Donk, when you woke up, was your front door locked as well? Uh, Are you talking about the smithy door, or are you talking about his? The smithy door. door, Once he, uh, he, he, he nods his head. He's like, yes, it was locked. So someone went in through the smithy after Baragon left took your bellows, closed the window, locked the door, and left out your alternate entrance. I don't think that makes sense. It doesn't make sense unless it was someone who... Donk, does anyone work with you? Don't you have siblings? He scratches. He nods. Uh, Donk will say, it wasn't any of them. I've already, like, it's like, no, it wasn't, it wasn't his brothers. His brothers live with him in, like, the little sort of, like, living area. So he knows it wasn't them. Um, But he does sort of, like, he starts thinking. Like, you can see him sort of, like, thinking. Um, I don't work with anyone, dear. (laughs) But there are a few odd characters around here. Aye. I did get the feeling that Baragon wasn't telling us the whole truth, right? That yeah, and you think that like that was because like he was like he had had a lot to drink, and then mm-hmm. he had sort of broken in to like put the bellows back and stuff like that. You don't think so. That, that was, was a, a true story. That, yeah, you think him. that now like yeah, you called him out on all the points where you were like mm, that doesn't make sense. How did you do? And he was like, oh well, kind of like this. You think that you've got the the true story out of Baragon? Like his, you know, he's you definitely think that like yeah, he's admitted to his faults now. He did break in, he left it, and then he left the doors open. <laughs> <laughs> and he did uh, accurately draw the smithy. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely did, yeah, yeah. And you've still got that. You can put that in your evidence uh, collection, <laughs> map of the smithy. You could take uh, it out on your DS and turn yeah. it around with the stylus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dust it for oh. prints and things. Um, yeah, and Donk will say, like, he, he's just like, uh, he'll say, yes, uh, it definitely was locked because when I opened the door, I had to clear away all the mess, is what he says. Mm. The mess by the door? Donk nods. What mess by the door? Oh, a few things had been knocked over. And he points at the work table on the map, on the little image that Baragon drew. He points at a little work table. Things had, and he says, like, things had been knocked off it. And I had to pick them all up and put them back. Hmm. Baragon, do you remember knocking anything over during this adventure of yours? No, I did. I Even though I was inebriated, sir, I did not knock anything over. I was very cautious and Clive will attest to this. We 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 wild manes are very mobile, uh, uh, mobile and agile creatures. I did climb in through the window, but look, and he'll gestures like I moved here, I put the bellows here, and then left the door. I didn't go anywhere near the table. Um, well, if we believe everything Baragon is saying, there is a third party involved. They sound like the true culprit to me, sir. <laughs> 
We shall hunt yeah. them down. Punch uh, you, severely. You still have a responsibility in this matter, Baragon, for leaving both the door and window open. And when you return something, can you do it during normal hours, <laughs> not drunk, and give it to the person you borrow from from here on out? Your ways are strange to me, my lord, but I will endeavor to adjust to them. It's and... a bit of a tall order. <laughs> and... I will try, but but pride, may, pride leader, please, to keep good relationships, I will, I will endeavor to follow their strange, bizarre customs. <laughs> You wanted to take a warm bath and you're a cat. Do you want to talk about <laughs> strange customs? Yeah. Yeah. He loves a nice hot bath. It's true. He does. Yeah. Oh, Sister, what do we do? I agree that the responsibility for leaving the, the smithy insecure falls to Baragon. And as Baragon is such a well-meaning and capable citizen, I'm sure that he wants to help the bellows be found. Am I correct? Of course, my lady. I, I do feel responsible. Donk kindly lent them to me. And if they have gone missing, and if, if I am somehow culpable in that in that theft, I wish to aid. And I will be, uh, I shall be the greatest hunter for these missing bellows. Um, and I endeavor. Uh, Dusk will kind of lean in and be like, there is, uh, you know, Donk Wobble has formally made an accusation against Baragor, my lady, um, on the on the concept of him be uh, having stolen or broken property. I will need you to pass a verdict on that specific accusation. Hmm. And this is the 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 accusation made against him is that he stole or broke the bellows. Um, anything else is a different matter. I, I look at Tarkal and I say, as much as it's bad form, breaking something that was lent to you is not a crime, right? No, no, it's not. And losing something that was lent to you is not a theft. No, not if you keep it, I suppose not. So in this case, Though I feel so deeply for our smithy, it doesn't seem like we could fairly convict Baragon of a crime at this moment. Not of not of thievery or uh, mishandle. Oh, he did mishandle, but he didn't break. However, but you would be you would be entitled to levy your own criminal charges against Baragon uh, if you wish to. Uh, we just need to deal with uh, Donk's formal, uh, you know. Uh, accusation. So what I what I'm saying is that un uh, unfortunately I don't think that we can give Donk the satisfaction of of a conviction for his accusation. However, we do have a confession of breaking and entering and uh, endanger endangering of property. property. Yeah. <laughs> Do you agree, Tarkal? I agree. Yes. As such. If the state, such as it is, accuses Baragon of this, then uh, it falls to us to determine how he will make it right. Yes, and I, I guess I'm, I'm sort of inclined to also think that if you borrow something and it is not returned to the owner, is it, isn't that thievery? Regardless of, because if I steal something and then I sell it to someone, I've stolen it, have I not? Mm hmm So, because the person who had no longer has. So is thievery defined by the action or by the victim? It depends on how you perceive lending an item to someone, I suppose. Mm. Because they say if you lend something to someone, you should be okay with never getting it back because that is such as the nature of sharing. However, with something so important as a bellows, certainly the necessity of it being returned is implied. Mm. Byron is very confused. <laughs> I, I, I propose that maybe if we can recover the bellows, if Baragon can help us, then it's no longer thievery, but there's, there is grounds for it to be considered theft. Would you like to put a stay on the uh, accusation uh, until uh, a, yes. a more detailed investigation a can be completed. Stay. A stay, quite a good stay, dusk. A stay, indeed. <laughs> Very well, in that case, uh, in, in 
in the uh, the lawful action of Donk Wobble versus Baragon in the case of the stolen bellows. Uh, the state has decided that it will be put to a formal investigation and inquiry uh, to be followed up within uh, a set period of time as determined by the Lord and Lady of the Lake. Exactly. Exactly what I was going to say. Very good. Thank you, my lady. Thank you, my lord. Uh, Mr. Don't Wobble, we will continue discussing this matter further um, and we will leave the, the investigation to her lord and ladyship and the, uh, the official uh, law enforcers of the town. Uh, come Mark, with me. Do, do, we, do, we, do we have any like spare bellows around or does, do we know oh, that yeah, Donk you has? Can, you, no, you, he can, he's got, he can get spare Okay, he's got spare. He, he just he wants, wants the emotional he, ones. He wants these yes. ones. Yeah, That's these fair. Important. I just want to make sure he's not out of work right now. Because no, of... no, 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 no. He's fine. He's fine. Fair. Fair. He's I... still mad, but... Yeah. <laughs> I lean over to Clive and I'm like, if uh, your pride could find the bellows, it would be a pretty great victory. I'm a fan of victory. I know you are. So it seems like maybe to uh, to trumpet the honor of your pride and your pride mate Baragon you and your pride mates might be highly motivated to find this bellows. Pride leader, I've had an idea. <coughs> What's that? I, I have been reading these mortals' literature, and I read this most exciting story about a fellow, they called them an investigator, and oh, they no. solved mysteries and like crimes. Like Sherlock Holmes. No, that's terrible. <laughs> Don't say that. Uh, <laughs> but what if we sh we could i one of the things that the 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 investigator does is they go to the scene of the crime the place where the crime took place and they look for clues and we're great at finding things we're hunters we could be great we could be great detectives i <laughs> let's do it clive <laughs> wildmane cat detective pi <laughs> pi yeah <laughs> clive and clive and baragon <laughs> It's gone. Like Watson. Yeah, PIs. Yep. They like slide over the castle walls and stuff. Baragon buys like a big trench coat to wear. Camera starts like hard zooming. Just, oh, it's so good. Dun, dun. It's uh, also it went. It was Phoenix, right? And then it became a little bit Law and Order there for a little bit, where yeah. it's like like it did. and Agnes is the uh, criminal <laughs> criminal courts. Dun, dun. Right, they were getting so like into the ethics of what is stealing. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, got a town, we got a town to take care of now. Right. All right. Uh, well, I'll tell Dusk to like through official channels get you know they're investigators. I'm sure to get like well, an. We, we, yeah, in a in, in a town like Evening Star, probably not investigators. It would probably fall to like the mm. the town guard. Basically, it would mm. fall to like soldiers who aren't the best at like actually like you know doing things like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like you know you your warden, and technically he is the leader of the town's militia. Mm. Is the warden, mm -hmm. so it is actually partly in Clive's jurisdiction and remit to investigate yeah. crimes within the town. So I'll just tell Dusk to make sure that Clive gets whatever personnel or resources he needs to lead this investigation and that the honor of the Leonin rides upon it. Dusk is like, of course, of course, my lady. You you can see that throughout this, Dusk has been trying not to just be like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's like, eh, bureaucracy, like it was a formal accusation. I, you know, he's, he's like, I gotta, gotta do the care paperwork. for the morale of the people. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is how laws work sometimes. But yeah, he's uh, he's like, yep, very good. We will make sure that Clive and Baragon have all the resources they need to find these missing bellows. The only resources we'll be needing are our minds, our wit, and our senses. <laughs> Baragon's like touching his nose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Dusk is like, man, this would be a great time for a dragon to just fucking just attack us. <laughs> burn it all down. Just burn it all down. Um, but yeah. Uh, so we will. So the the donk wobble turnabout continues for another day, and the, now it. now begins the investigation phase. Jesus, oh Agnes still, is just, just now sitting back and lion I'm... face transitions. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I am genuinely tempted for for Clive's flashbacks. I mean, we weren't really sure what to do for like Nate's flashback thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is just Baragon and Clive solving yeah. crimes in <laughs> evening. Yes, and we just do a murder mystery episode. Yes, I want to watch that. 
Yeah, um, I want to watch that so it. bad. Like, we could I want to be it part like of it. Group one. Yeah, it could be yeah. like you know they they come to you for special you know like we need a specialist in magic and they get a we'll, Zara. We'll call it um, the missing bellows, a Clive's out story. I do declare, <laughs> mystery is a foot. <laughs> Oh, it's oh, really good. Love oh it. my Excellent. god. Nice. Anna's like, stop, stop, guys. I I'm, can't laugh. I'm, I'm, I'm so laughing sorry. in my heart. <laughs> good. Um, oh man. All right. Well, we're gonna we'll pick that up another day. We'll pick that up for Clive's flashback. Then we'll have the Baragon and Clive, uh, the Clive's out mystery. Mm -hmm. um, so good. Oh, but it's mystery. tantalizing. It's like a I must flash know. Current. It's like a flash <laughs> yeah. current. Yeah. Flash current. Flash current. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, is there anything else anybody else would like to do? I do. Um, otherwise, we can sort of move to the next day because dinner oh, day is the oh. next day. Oh yeah, no, I got nothing. I I, I got to do sure. a little. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Because I'm pretty sure. Because I think that. Oh no! Wait, is it like my no, last okay. chance? No. You um, sure, Shady? No, Shady, no, I feel no, like. No, no, no. It's not your last chance. No, no. I, it's just I just I I. No, I, th I think the fact that Willow Song and Tarkal were in the same room together and are clearly civil and people now know that they are like civil is like all that Tarkal needed Progress. for his story. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, I want to contact. Do I know what restaurant or where Alyssa is taking Azara? Yeah, it's um so it's the it's 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 known as the Sweetwater Cafe now. It's actually um Aaron and Aaron's mom Susan's like bakery, but they've turned it into like a full restaurant now. Nice. It's like an actually like really nice place to go and eat like good food like mm -hmm. for travelers and merchants and things. Um and it's like two stories, they've got like a roof terrace um and it's become like a fully fledged kind of like place to eat. Um uh, in the evening, so. Agnes would know this information, but what's Azara's favorite dessert? That's a great question. Uh, it would probably be a key lime like tart. Okay, so uh, Agnes visits the bakery and asks mm -hmm. for a special key lime tart to be made, and explains that something special will happen tomorrow, and that oh. Azara is going to be there, and and if things look uh, like there's cause for celebration, to serve that pie, compliments of the crown silvers. Susan uh, leans into you and she's like, oh, I know all about it, my lady. Oh, yes, uh, the night commander has been here. She's made a request. We've decorated the roof terrace for them. We've got it all prepared for tomorrow. It's going to be rather fabulous. Obviously, you know, it's a lovely and she's a lovely woman. She spent lots of money to hire it all out. It's all completely private. We're not going to have anybody else here. I mean, she's given us a lot of money to, to prepare. It's very special, right? I don't know what she's planning, but it must be something important. And she kind of makes like a gossip face. Uh, <laughs> did did, um, did yes, they already I, have a key lime pie ordered? She did. She did. Put it on the menu. Yes, she did. Mm. But it's still lovely that you did it. But yes, yeah, so she, she's, she's tailored the menu. It's very good. Is there anything I could add? Well, you know, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't serve alcohol here. If maybe somebody wanted to buy a lovely bottle of something at the tavern to have for the, for the champagne. For Azara loves champagne. I assume. It's yeah. true. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Agnes will hop over to the tavern, buy the finest bottle of champagne that she can find and bring that back. Bring Compliments of the crown silvers. Thank you very much. My Susan is like, we'll put this aside. We'll put it in our box of preserving, keep it nice and chilled. And then, uh, yes, we'll bring that out. If there's cause for, if there's cause for celebration, of course. Right. Um, but yes, all right. Um, Aaron! <laughs> She's like, yeah, <laughs> after Aaron is like, like, get in! He's like, mom! And then, <laughs> mom! Mom! Um, but yeah, uh, it's a whole thing. Um, so yeah, you can get that prepared. Um, Aaron's and, like, he was 15 when we met him, right? Yes, he's about 16 now. Huh. 16, 17. Growing up, yeah. he's still he's still he's still Aaron. Then. Yeah. Um, he is also te he is the town herald. Like he is yeah. the town mm -hmm. crier. Basically, he has a job, he has a job now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but he still he lives. Pays bills. Yeah. He, yeah, he does pay bills, but he still lives at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, that will get set up, and then yeah, we uh, an e a day goes past, um, and evening comes round as the sun sets. Uh, Mika, do you want to tell us what's going down? What's uh, what's the look? What's going? What's what's happening in Azara's life? I think uh, so. Azara's gonna 
knows that you know tonight is is a night for her and her and her lady she's gonna put aside all all thoughts of war and 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 guilt and and things that are going on and i think that since azara has get, gotten to know uh Alyssa a little bit more she's kind of let down some of her like pretentious walls so she kind of dresses a little more casually with mm -hmm. Alyssa, which is very rare for anyone to see so even though she knows that it's like a nice dinner on a rooftop mm -hmm. she still just wears like you know what totally out there she's wearing like some big flowy like slacks mm -hmm. like some like with like a like a pretty bow and like a like a low cut like flowy blouse and like very simple jewelry wings. pants yes she's wearing pants, pants? she's wearing pants Whoa. That's how comfortable she is with Alyssa. Whoa. She's wearing pants. Right. That's, and it's because it's like, that's not the typical thing that Azara wears, right? Exactly. Yeah, the other, the other outfits are more like a way of making a statement, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you wear those kind of outfits for Azara, it's like a power statement. Whereas uh -huh. right. this is like showing that this is comfort. This is, this right. is safe. She's like comfortable with her. She's like, yeah, like I can just wear like some nice, like formal trousers and, and, and a fancy blouse and, mm -hmm. um, she like lesser makeup just kind of you know just to feel nice like not too primped but very comfortable she's left her staff at home not preparing to get into any battle really just trying to clear her mind and uh um she heads out to dinner completely unassuming by the way has no idea that anything completely special she just thinks that her her girl yeah. is doing something nice for her yeah uh, you make your way to the Sweetwater Cafe, which is in the main sort of heart of Evening Star now, which is you know, walled, walled town on the river. Um, and yeah, you make your way there and it is open, but you don't see any guests inside. It's, it's, there's nobody eating on like the lower levels. There's nobody there, but it's all lit up very nicely and it's clearly open. And in fact, young Aaron is waiting at the door and he's kind of not dressed like nicely but he's wearing like a nice like tunic and like maybe like a little sort of like surcoat or something like that like he's clear like something that like he would probably be forced to wear to for a nice event kind of thing <laughs> um and he kind of sees you and he kind of like fumbles a little bit and he's oh Mr. Rizar I, I was told to wait out here for you to bring you inside because um the rest of the cafe is closed today We're, I'm going to take you right up to the the rooftop for uh for your for your dinner um Azaro kind of like can't help but grin because he looks so adorable, mm -hmm. all dressed up. She's like, it's like he's got his like, emo hair over his eyes. <laughs> yeah, um, like, come, come with me. And and Zara will around. smile and just nod and follow him. And uh, before he walks away, I'll just kind of like brush the hair out of his eyes and be like, you know, your mother doesn't like it when your hair is in your face. Come on, Aaron. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Mister. <laughs> like, like, shuffles in. Um, and he takes you up the stairs, which is like this uh, wrought iron spiral staircase that goes up to the upper floor. And then there's a similar sort of like outdoor sort of stairway that leads up to the roof. Um, throughout the whole way, you find like um, there's in each of the sort of like along the path, uh, dancing lights have been left um, oh. just to kind of like illuminate everything. Uh, and when you get up to the top floor, it is just one table sort of like on the roof. It's all been sort of decorated uh, with like trellises and like flowers and fake pressed kind of like flowers and stuff like that. But it's nice. It's it's not extravagant or magical. It is something that like a normal folk would put together as like, you know, there's there's nice fabrics kind of draped around, but it's not anything crazy or opulent. Um, and sort of sat there sort of at the table and she immediately kind of stands up when she sees you kind of arrive uh, is Alyssa. Um, and almost in a kind of, uh, almost in a bit of an opposite to you, you know, where you've kind of gone for the, the pants and you've kind of gone with a bit more casual and stuff. Alyssa, who's normally wearing military uniform and her armor is wearing a very nice kind of like flowing dress. Um, it's a, a elegant, but not overly so. Like the two of you aren't mismatched. Like she's not dressed up really, really fancy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still kind of in the same region as you, um, but it's just more feminine. It's And again, it's that kind of like comfort level, right? And, mm. and she's always had that kind of side of her that she rarely lets, gets to let out. Her hair has been sort of braided in like parts of it, but still nice and long. So she has like a couple of different braids um, with actual, uh, with feathers, kind of like white feathers, like your wings mm. kind of like tied Aww. into them. And, um, you know, and she's still got like her big arms are all on show. Like, you know, she's wearing this dress, but she still has these very muscular arms um, with just decorated with like nice bangles and, and nails and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you look at her and immediately like she just is just so happy to see you just like, ah, I was, yeah, I was hoping that everything would be all right. I know you've been busy. Um... As I will like run up to her 
um, and give her like a huge hug and she'll kind of laugh and be like, well, I, I almost didn't recognize you out of uniform. It's been so long. <laughs> I know. And she'll sort of like look down. Cause I think like there is definitely a height difference. She's taller than you, I think. Right. Like, Azara is a very small elf. <laughs> yeah. So like, she's like looking down at you and she's just like, well, and the same goes for you. It's nice to see you looking comfortable for a change. Um, and just looking like you can relax. Um, just sort of like smiles down, but I'm glad that we get this time. I'm glad that we have this time to just catch up and, and be together and just I am probably too probably just kiss you on like the cheek and stuff and then take your hand and sort of take you over to the table. Um, it's just us. Uh, I, you know, no one else is going to be here. Um, Susan and the others are downstairs, but they're only going to come up to bring food. We've got the whole place to ourselves as long as we want. Um, well, aren't you a romantic little someone? I wasn't expecting all this. I thought we were just going to have dinner. I may be a knight, Magister, but I did grow up reading stories of you know, knights and, and nobles and princesses and princes. I know a thing or two about romance and lovely dinners and moonlight walks and terraces and the sort of thing. Uh, I know I might not seem it, but it's, I like to do it. It's, it's nice to get away from being Captain Alyssa for a little bit. Um, well, Captain Alyssa or just my Alyssa, I'm very lucky to have you. And uh, yeah, she'll bring you down. There is food, um, and you know, unless there is anything you want to say or ask, it is a very lovely evening. I'm I'm terrible at these kind of <laughs> like things. I, I can't role play Alyssa, you know, being the smooth, confident knight captain that she is. Um, I can't but... role play uh, Zara being fucking confident. I'm a bumbling idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, very very normal but very nice i think like or certainly that's like what Alyssa feels about it. it's like that kind of like there's nothing too extravagant but it's just mm -hmm. meaningful and sentimental enough that she's clearly put thought and effort into it from what she can right yeah and i think that azara also would have like since i'm assuming it's a multi-course meal they have time to each yeah, other you yeah. know they'll have like catching up talks but also she'll get to vent a little bit about what's been going on on her side of the war. Alyssa gets mm. to talk about her side of the war, just kind of like catching up on everything going on and stuff like that. And having some of those real moments too, right? Like talking to probably about the war wizard stuff and Alyssa yeah. kind of like listening to you. And, and she never tries to like over talk or give too much advice. She just listens mainly. Um, and then it's just always, you know, she's like, well, I don't know what the solution is, but whatever you need, I'm here. If there's anything I can do, she, you know, it's more that like it's support without necessarily trying to always find the solution to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as we get to the sort of near the end of the evening, as like the stars are glittering above, the moon is kind of like shining down. I'm gonna roll. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a wisdom saving throw. Okay. There's a point where things go quiet for a bit, and she's just kind of looking at you, and you're having that nice kind of like just sort of staring at each other in the moonlight, and then she sort of seems to like nod like she's made a decision about something mm -hmm. and uh she will sort of look at you and say you know there's one thing i i want to ask you how do you where do you see this going do you you know there's a war coming and i've never really asked you about it do you see yourself being with somebody for the rest of your life or is this what do you want in the grand scheme of things i think azara's like super taken aback because she's never actually thought about it mm. um like ever <laughs> uh and she doesn't quite make eye contact with Alyssa. she kind of does that thing where she like stares to like the left of her shoulder Mm. Um, and she says, I th think that is the first time anyone has asked me. And I, to be very honest, I have never pictured myself as old or I've pictured myself past next month because my line of work doesn't allow me to, but I, and then she like tries to focus on Alyssa. Yeah. She said, I, I too 
grew up reading stories of princes and princesses and fairy tale weddings and being with someone, but I, I didn't think that applied to me, I guess. I, I always hoped, but who would want to be with someone who could go off to battle and die the next day? When you say that, she like looks and she's like, well, I certainly know what that's like. And I think that's maybe something that we really do have in common. That's how I've always felt too. Perhaps that doesn't have to be our destiny. And she will stand up. <gasps> she gets on one knee. And she will bring out what she's been hiding, sort of like, you know, somewhere on the table. A very plain but well-decorated little wooden box. Dark wood, metal-like engravings, all made to look like silvery um, angel wings, kind of grasping the box itself. <laughs> and she will, she opens it. And inside, there is a ring and the ring is going to discord um, no, no, I'm gonna, no, <laughs> oh I'm gonna, you're, you're I'm describing okay out. now i'm gonna describe right. it <clears throat> it is a custom engagement ring with sky blue gemstones a sapphire and a scintillating diamond set between curved feathery wings um on a on a silvery band um and you know having you know spent time with Alyssa, her family are jewelers um and it looks like it's been custom made and it has her how it has her family's sigil on the inside <laughs> she will say azara would you spend the rest of your life with me will you marry me azara like immediately like almost anime style like <laughs> tears start streaming down her face like like disgusting silent tears and very uncharacteristically of azara she will like tackle hug Alyssa to the ground and just keep saying yes yes a thousand times yes like over and over and over again um and we'll just start like you just ugly sobbing a pile. yeah <laugh> yeah Alyssa joins you in the ugly sobbing and uh laughing and smiling but also crying as you're just like <laughs> not the not the expectation no, no, not the thing she was expecting but very very happy and then as you're kind of like running around she'll like kiss you and like it's you know you're kind of embraced and then you just hear a congratulations <laughs> and, <laughs> and Aaron and like and probably I don't know is Agnes has Agnes been like waiting there the whole time like no uh, she just no, she the champagne just, like, but she's yeah. just sitting at home thinking like is it happening is it happening yeah. now is it happening? but uh yeah basically they surprise you with like the champagne and they tell you that it was from uh, uh, Agnes who who left it if there was anything to celebrate um, leave it with you and stuff and then they'll leave you to it but like it does kind of have this moment of like you're both on the sort of like floor on top of each other and like, you have to look up as like Aaron's like whoa <laughs> just like there um, but they leave you to it and uh yeah and then yeah she you enjoy the rest of your evening however you wish but uh it was uh, uh something that Elissa wanted very much to do um I think that knowing that Agnes had probably a part in this after you know celebrating with Alyssa in our own way, like late yeah. at night, knowing Agnes is probably still awake. Uh, Azara is gonna go to Agnes's room and, and knock on the door. Agnes totally awake, opens it immediately. <laughs> and Azara's just like, Agnes, like she's, she's like faking really sad. She's like looking like really solemn. She's like, I- Do you wanna make a, do you wanna make a deception check for me? Let's see yeah, I do, I really do. <laughs> All right. Oh shit, you're so smart though. You're so perceptive. Yeah, um, my- Can always roll a one. All right, that's an 18. All right, make an insight How... check in. Oh, I just oppose and Yeah, because otherwise, because otherwise I know you're gonna pass it. Anytime. Right. So if you roll- <laughs> I rolled a 10. It's yes! <laughs> so I was like, like... I, I just wanted to come by and um, talk to you because I'm going to need help picking out my wedding dress. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like, hugs like, Agnes and starts screaming in the middle of the hallway. We're just like jumping up and down and screeching. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Oh my god, a few, a few seconds it. later, a guard is like, My lady! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then I had to grab the guard and start jumping up and down yeah. with the guard. Yeah, he's he he like is confused and he's like, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> just it's like completely doesn't know what's going on, but happy to join in. Um, but yeah, 
Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that Agnes knew. <laughs> yeah, and just like completely unintelligible squealing sounds that like actually are a conversation between Agnes and Azara, but nobody else could understand. Absolutely yeah. not. And I feel yeah. so bad for any neighbors because it's just mm -hmm. going to be squealing until the early morning. Mm -hmm. Like it does the pan out where it's like we're screaming in the hallway and then it's a pan out of the castle and there's like screaming from <laughs> the castle it's and then it's a pan out from of above. the town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and it's probably going to be like people are like, "Did you hear that the banshees attacked the keep last night?" and things like that. Um, yes, there were there were twelve of them. I heard. And, you know, it just becomes this ridiculous rumor. Um, yes, banshees attacked the castle. But yeah, exactly. Amazing! Yay! D and D proposal. That's the first time I've ever been in a game where a proposal actually happened. Listen, Same. Uh, it's the final season. You got, we, right? got, we got we got to we got to squeeze in a war wedding, right? We got to squeeze yes. in a war oh wedding. Oh my gosh, war, war wedding. wedding! So romantic, so romantic. We'll do a Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, like the getting married. Mika, yes. We have, are we? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, we we're, we're there. We're, we're there. there. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so unless is there anything else? Uh, otherwise, I've got one more thing to sort of end the episode. It's probably going to be a little bit early, but I've got a thing to sort of curl tail it and lead into future apps. I'm no. nothing but squealing I'm on my end. All right. Okay. In that case, uh, a few days after the proposal, um, a messenger arrives. Uh, Dusk assembles all of you and calls you in to meet with this messenger. Um, and uh, the Dusk will announce and be like, My Lord and Lady Magister Warden, uh, we have a, a guest. Uh, a messenger has been sent by Queen Raedra Orbeskir of Suzale. I'm going to introduce her herald. Um, and the herald steps forward and they're just like a plain dressed human just wearing sort of like a page's tunic they are bearing a scroll um and they will step forth and be like my lord and lady crown silver magister azara and i believe clive of the wild main warden of evening star her majesty requests your presence at a war council two weeks hence in the capital of suzale she is ready to make an offensive on the traitor davian cormoril and they will hand over the scroll and she would very much like Evening Star's assistance in ending this threat to our nation. Agnes will take the scroll solemnly and nod, but look very sad because war is always sad. Yep, absolutely. Um, the Herald will step back. They won't, they'll leave the room, but they'll basically wait for your response to send back, like, yes, they're coming. Mm -hmm. um, but that Dusk can take care of that. But uh, you are left in the audience chamber with just the group of you. Uh, with Dusk, maybe with a list there as well. And um, yeah, the scroll itself is basically a formal, like written in fancy Cormirian lettering and like all fancy language, but it's basically a, as you know, we are we are going to take the offensive. It's basically saying that like having dealt with the thorns, thanks to the aid of Evening Star and, and their, their network of intelligence, we have eliminated these saboteurs. We have managed to put down these threats and we can now finally begin to take on uh, Davian's rebel forces um, and there is a request to come to Suzale to discuss how that war and how those battles will take place um, together who is the message from exactly uh, it's from Queen Raedra uh, okay. Queen Raedra Obiskir she is the queen of Cormier well if it's the queen agent. then certainly a formal response desk please yeah, and she is the one who um, she's the one who gave you Evening Star. Like there was yeah. a decision on who was going to get Evening Star. It was Raedra who decided that the Crown Silver siblings would get it, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Dusk will be like, I will make it yeah, absolutely at once, and he will craft a beautiful kind of like response of like mm -hmm. Evening Star will answer the Her Majesty's call, and that is where we're going to leave things off. With um, we're probably going to be doing a couple of these flashback episodes, but then the next kind of like timeline canon episode is going to be you guys arriving at Suzale for this war council visiting the capital of Cormir um, where absolutely nothing will go wrong no <laughs> oh, there's no not. way that you gave us an engagement in Phoenix Wright Joy because everything's going to be perfect next time exactly that's how many it's... NPCs are you killing Mark that's what I want to know or how many opportunities are there for them to die that's what I want to oh, know oh I mean, how many NPCs am I killing? I have no idea, Shady, and I I don't kill the NPCs. You're right. That's why I said dice, how many opportunities the will there dice be? Dice decide. Yes. The, uh, many opportunities. <laughs> many <laughs> opportunities. Okay. Um, He's like, don't love Donk Wobble. Donk Wobble's going to be dead, Wobble. Oh, no. I mean, I don't know. Do you still love Donk Wobble? <laughs> no, we hate him. 
Yeah, exactly. It's fine. Um, <laughs> good. You won't care when he dies then. Uh, no! anyway. oh! uh, I like the fact that your immediate thing was like, you know, protect Donk Wobble, not your new wife. I was just. I mean, say. she has plot armor, right? Uh, I Mika, don't know. No, I don't know. I don't that know. was my immediate fear. Yeah, me too. I I didn't want to say it because I didn't want it to, plot to, armor. but I was like. No, yeah, no, Alyssa's... If you kill Alyssa, Mark, I swear. Yeah, no, that's there's going to be some drama. Been saying, what if I go to battle? Yeah, and yeah, and we're going to die. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's not great. I'm not making any decisions that anybody will die, but don't think that any of you or any of the NPCs have any protection. This is the se final season. Damn. No more Evening Star. What well, goes, goes. Like, you know, you roll ones on death saving throws, there ain't no mystical god resurrections now. It's like, you're gone, you're done, you're toast. That's um, a that's the villain arc for Azara right there. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, is. that would the be one, like the one oh. good like stable mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it'd be like oh well, fuck goodness, time to murder. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yeah. Time that. to be law lawful evil ruthlessness time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, love it. Uh, that's gonna be it for the episode. Little maybe a little bit shorter, but just wanted to make sure that we kind of had a good ending point, um, and we had some good laughs as well. So mm -hmm. oh yeah, good. Uh, should we do quick shout outs going around? Let's start with Mika Burton. Ah, that's me. Hi, my name is Mika Burton. You can find me uh, everywhere at Mika Burton. You can find my horseback riding adventures at Mika Strides. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when this is going up, so I can't tell you what I'm doing. I uh, go to Anna. Uh, hi, I'm Anna. You can find me at AnnaProcer.com or at AnnaProcer on social media. I advise you to wear sunscreen and go to the dermatologist. And uh, I don't know if this isn't announced yet, but I'm just going to say it, which is uh, if you're going to Magic 30, which is the event in Las Vegas at the end of October, I will be there and uh, doing some hosting things. So I hope to Ooh. see you there. And I tag Nate. Hello. Uh, I have a new album coming out at the end of October. It's called Scrap Heap. It's kind of the last, like, the last album I'm going to do for a very long time. So uh, oh. go go check it out. It I There's links somewhere. I don't know. Look up Nate Wants to Battle Scrappy. You'll find it. I tag Shady. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Shady Penguin. You can find me at Shady Penguin on social media. Uh, if you watch me stream every day when the stream is starting soon, we listen to this really awesome musician called Nate Wants to Battle. <laughs> wow. And uh, yeah, literally my chat bops out to it every morning and every afternoon. So what? you find me there and you get to listen to both of us. Yeah, dude. That's uh, like my favorite band. Yeah, I'm taken out for copyright claiming. Let's go. Uh, but that's it. Nate's um, like, actually, I'm suing you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my lawyer's on the phone. No, yeah. Uh, you can find me Hello. socials. Try not to get sick. And if you have kids, if you're like me and you have kids, I'm sorry with how often they get sick because it's a <laughs> sad. I'll tag Mark. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks. I don't have kids, but I still get sick all the time because I just I'm a terrible nerd with a terrible immune system. But um, you can find me at Sherlock Humes pretty much most places on the Internet. There'll be an underscore in there somewhere. It might be in the middle. It might be at the end. Ooh. It's a mystery. Ooh. Spooky. Try and figure it out. Um, but now you can find me most places. I do a show called High Rollers d d That's kind of like my main jam. Uh, it's a DD show I've been doing for a very long time that I'm the DM for. Come and watch that. Uh, you can find us on podcast, YouTube, all that good stuff, and on Twitch, etc. Uh, you can come check that out. Um, apart from that, yeah, just follow me on socials, all that good stuff. And there'll be more Night of Evening Star coming very soon. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much me done. And I think that's us out. Yes? Yeah. Farewell. Until next week. Bye-bye. Adios. Oh.